फ्यूचर प्रोजेक्शन दिस इज एक्चुअली द फ्यूचर प्रोजेक्शन ऑफ अ मोलिक्यूल एंड आई विल टेल यू दैट हाउ टू प्रेजेंट इट दिस इज द इक्लिस्ट फॉर्म ऑफ द मोलिक्यूल एंड यू आर वीविंग दिस मोलिक्यूल from this side then your eye will see this kind of thing and in the fisher projection you will get this one let me describe this you are watching from this angle this bond and this bond these are in the back of the plane this is your reference plane and this two and this two these four atoms are in front of the plane so you will see a structure like this your eye will see this and if you just project it on a paper you will get the fisher projection now the appropriate method of writing these structures that the higher oxidized carbon atom should be placed at the top and the lower one should be at the bottom the numbering will also start from the top now see that this one is cho aldehyde group and this one is ch2oh group as the cho group is the higher oxidized carbon that's why we are numbering it as 1 and writing is at the top the next one will be 2 this carbon will be 3 and this will be 4 okay The following five rules summarize the conventions used in the construction of Fisher projections. Number one, a Fisher projection is based on an eclipsed molecular conformation. Two, the bonds connecting the asymmetric carbons are arranged in a vertical line. Three, the asymmetric carbons are located at the intersections of vertical and horizontal bonds and are not drawn explicitly. Four, vertical bonds to the asymmetric carbons recede behind the page, away from the observer in the three-dimensional model. Five, horizontal bonds to the asymmetric carbons emerge from the page toward the observer in the three-dimensional model. Now this is the eclipsed conformation of a molecule. and how to derive a fisher projection for d glucose okay so this is d glucose structure of d glucose open ring structure this a is the open ring structure of d glucose the naturally occurring enantiomer now first the eclipsed conformation is viewed with the chain of carbons oriented vertically and curving away from the observer and the horizontal bonds projecting towards the observer this view is projected onto an imaginary curved cylinder this is your imaginary curved cylinder and you are just projecting this molecule onto the surface of this cylinder now mentally cutting the cylinder and flattening it gives the fisher projection so if you project this molecule on a cylinder carved cylinder and then cut it along this direction and then flat it then you will get this fisher projection the use of an eclipsed conformation to derive a fisher projection does not mean that the molecule actually has such a conformation fisher projections convey no information about molecular conformations their only purpose is to show the absolute configuration of each asymmetric carbon to derive a three dimensional model of a molecule from its fisher projection reverse the process the vertical bonds in the fisher projection extend away from the observer and the horizontal bonds extend toward the observer so you have to just reverse the process you have got this fisher projection and you are getting an eclipsed conformation of the molecule this vertical bond 
this one and this one will be away from the observer this two which are away from the observer you are viewing from this molecule this side and these the horizontal bonds these are towards the observer that means here one is in the front another is in the back but these two are in the upside from from which you are viewing this molecule a fissure projection may be turned 180 degree in the plane of the paper this manipulation is allowed because it leaves horizontal bonds horizontal and vertical bonds vertical therefore it does not alter the meaning of the fissure projection so if you have a fissure projection then you can turn it 180 degree in the paper so this top carbon will go to the bottom and this bottom carbon will come to the top this is fissure allowed a fissure projection may not be turned 90 degree in the plane of the page so if you have a fissure projection you cannot rotate it 90 degree in the plane of the page because now this where your vertical bond now this have become the horizontal bond which is forbidden so go through the lines this manipulation violates the Fisher convention that all asymmetric carbons should be aligned vertically when we attempt this operation on a Fisher projection containing a single asymmetric carbon a further problem becomes evident now here we have a single asymmetric carbon now if we rotate this fissure projection 90 degree on the plane of the page then you will get you will, you will actually get an enantiomer of the first molecule so you are finally getting this which is an enantiomer of the first molecule the 90 degree rotation exchanges horizontal and vertical groups and in the process interconverts the original structure into the enantiomer this is disastrous because the whole idea of fissure projections is to convey stereochemical information a fissure projection may not be lifted from the plane of the paper and turned over so you cannot take it from the plane of the paper and you cannot turn it this is forbidden in the fissure projection otherwise you will get an enantiomer if you just put it from the paper and then turn it 180 degree you will get an enantiomer and an, an enantiomer is actually a mirror image of this previous one this one is the mirror although it's not looking like a mirror but just consider that this is a mirror so you will get a mirror image in this case and that will be an enantiomer the three groups at either end of a fissure projection may be interchanged in a cyclic permutation that is all three groups can be moved at the same time in a closed loop so that each occupies an adjacent position yes this is very much important thing in case of fissure projection that you can rotate this you can interchange the positions in a cyclic manner that means you can take this H here this OH here and this CH2OH here this is fish allowed so all the confirmations will be same in case of this one and this one if this center was R here also this will be R in case of R is nomenclature now in case of this you can also just make a cyclic permutation here or even here an interchange of any two of the groups bound to an asymmetric carbon changes the configuration of that carbon 
A pair of interchanges leaves the configuration of the carbon unaffected. The first interchange changes the configuration and the second interchange changes the configuration back to the original. That means if you change these two groups, this H and OH, if you make a change, you will get the enantiomer of this molecule. But if you make two consecutive change, then you will get the same same isomer. The RS system can be applied to a Fisher projection without using a model. If the group of lowest priority is in either of the two vertical positions, simply apply the RS priority rules to the remaining three groups. You know that in case of RS nomenclature, you have to number all the four atoms connected with the asymmetric carbon. And you have to do it by CIP rules. Khan in gold prelog rules and the lowest priority group if in case of Fisher position this is in a vertical position then you can just apply the RS or CIP rule um, on the other three priority atoms now in case of one two three you are getting a anti-clockwise rotation that means this will give S anti-clockwise or counterclockwise rotation you can say this will lead to an S enantiomer. This method works because if the lowest priority group is in a vertical position in the Fisher projection it is oriented away from the observer as required for application of the priority rules. If the lowest priority group is in a horizontal position proceed in the same manner but since the molecule is being viewed incorrectly for assigning configuration reverse the assignment that means if your least prior group is in a horizontal position and not in a vertical position then just go to the cyclic manner one two three one two three this is giving a clockwise rotation but as this least prior group is in a horizontal position you have to take it reverse so if you got the clockwise you have to consider the counterclockwise rotation and this will lead to s now this is a homework for all of you that you have to indicate whether the structures in each of the following pairs are enantiomer or dastriomer or identical molecules okay i can help you that at first that take this ch3 in this vertical position and this ch3 in this vertical position then actually you will get that these two are identical molecules this one and this one identical and in case of this one just simply rotate it 180 degree on the plane of the paper so you will get this now the next question is which of the following are Fisher projections of a meso compound so I'm giving a hint that if you have to find out a meso compound then you have to find out a plane of symmetry that means in this case this will be the plane of the symmetry so this you don't have to consider this asymmetric carbon because this will go to the plane of the symmetry and in the first case this is a CHO and this is CH2OH so this is definitely not in the second case this will be a meso compound in third and fourth these will also be not but you have to check this C and D make an interchange with the CH2OH and H group then you will see that these are not meso compounds D and L designations of monosaccharides this is capital D and this is capital L don't be confused with the small d and small l which are actually for for the optical rotation which denotes the optical rotation 
dextrodotatory and levorotatory. The deal system named after Latin dexter and levers, which means right and left, is a convention used to distinguish between enantiomers of chiral monosaccharides and chiral alpha amino acids based on the molecule drawn as a fissure projection in a specific orientation. The DEL labeling is unrelated to plus minus. It does not indicate which enantiomer is dextrorotatory and which is levorotatory. Rather, it indicates the compound stereochemistry. If the prior group of the highest number of asymmetric carbon is in the right, that will be the D configuration, and if the prior group is in the left, that will be the L configuration. Early in the 20th century, before the absolute configurations of any organic compounds were known, this system of stereochemical designations was introduced. According to this system, which was first suggested by M. A. Rosanoff in 1906, plus glyceraldehyde is designated as D glyceraldehyde and minus glyceraldehyde is designated as L glyceraldehyde. These two compounds moreover served as configurational standards for all monosaccharides. A monosaccharide whose highest numbered chirality center has the same configuration as D glyceraldehyde is designated as D sugar. One whose highest numbered chirality center has the same configuration as L glyceraldehyde is designated as an L sugar. And it has an disadvantage that it specifies only the configuration of one chirality center that is the highest numbered chirality center and other chirality centers are not described by this D or L system. To determine whether a given enantiomer of a chiral monosaccharide is D or L, use the following procedure. Step 1. Make sure the acyclic form of the molecule is drawn as a fissure projection. If the monosaccharide is an aldose, the aldehyde group must be on top. If it is a ketose, the carbonyl carbon must be the second carbon from the top. Step 2. Number the carbon atoms starting at the top. Step 3. Locate the carbon atom that bears the second highest number which is known as the penultimate carbon that means which is the highest asymmetric carbon if the hydroxy group on the penultimate carbon is on the right of the carbon chain assign the level D to that compound if it is on the left of the carbon chain assign level D now this is your penultimate carbon that means highest numbered asymmetric carbon and the prior group always is in the right side right side of this vertical bond that's why this is D and here the OH group in the highest number of asymmetric carbon which is the penultimate carbon is on the left side that's why this is L now this is also a exercise for you classify each of the following L doses as D or L so I am giving you a hint that at first make a cyclic permutation here. So that's why CH3 will come in the vertical, OH will go to the horizontal and H will go here and you will get this is D. And you can just check the next one yourself, do it yourself.